The story begins in a world where individuals can experience a realistic second life through a game called Empyrean God Realm. This game is based on quantum entanglement and neural connection technologies, enabling users to have 100% realistic experiences, including temperature, taste, and touch. Also, players can embark on extreme expeditions and engage in thrilling battles, all while enjoying the freedom of flight. Moreover, this game offers countless business opportunities, allowing users to amass wealth rapidly, akin to a CEO marrying rich and beautiful partners of their choice, regardless of gender. What's even more enchanting is that the new gaming helmet available can repair users' nerves and rejuvenate their bodies, provided they log into the game daily. This news was a ray of hope for individuals like Lu Chen, who had been living with physical disabilities. So, he immediately bought the gaming helmet that Tianxin Corp had promoted, eagerly anticipating that all their promises would come true, because his life hadn't always been like this. In the past, he had a high-paying job with a promising future. However, an accident dramatically altered his circumstances, leaving him severely injured while protecting someone. With this, Lukin found himself on the receiving end of misfortune. To save him, they had to deplete all their savings and sell their properties, but despite their best efforts, he remained a cripple, only capable of moving his head and arms. From that moment onwards, he became a weight on his sister's shoulders, and a target for judgmental onlookers, who seemed to have nothing better to do with their lives, couldn't resist belittling him, even though they were aware of his tragic story, but although their words dripped with malice, he recognized that this was his new reality, and he didn't want to burden his sister any further, so, he decided to leave, luckily, the game called Empyrean God Realm appeared, this game had sparked. Numerous rumors. Some said that players who took part in its internal testing underwent profound transformations with one even becoming superhuman however, what truly piqued Lu Chen's interest was the game's rumored ability to help high paraplegia and vegetative state patients regain their mobility and return to a normal life fueled by these whispers of hope he staked his future on this game with this determination he went straight home eager to test the game immediately. However, upon his return, he discovered that his sister wasn't there, and examining his surrounding, he saw his phone displayed a message from her, explaining that she would be working overtime, but this only strengthened his resolve, so he hastily retrieved the gaming helmet he had purchased, even though he wasn't sure if it would work flawlessly, since this was his second-hand VR headgear, but due to financial problems, he had no other option, thus, he hoped for the best and logged into the game, now that the game had completely booted up, a system avatar suddenly materialized, welcoming him to the game, it then prompted him to enter his ID, which he did without hesitation, choosing a peculiar name for himself, the only wild one. Now that was settled, the system avatar dramatically tore through the fabric of space, revealing the breathtaking in-game world to him. However, he couldn't help but notice something unusual. Looking down at his own hands, he was taken aback by their fluffiness. This surprised and confused him, so he wondered if this was a new character class in the game, as he hadn't heard of any players discussing it before. Typically, games started with character customization and clothing options. As he examined himself further, it became evident that he had transformed into a wild beast, a far cry from the warrior, puppeteer, and shooter classes he had expected. Now, he pondered if he could still hunt wild beasts for leveling up or making money in this new form. If not, it would be a total problem for him, which made him panic, but freaking out wouldn't get him anywhere. So, he took a deep breath and opened the character menu. To his dismay, the game classified him as a weak werewolf. This designation came with significant disadvantages, a negative 20% penalty to his basic type specialty, lower than average attributes, a low class bloodline, and a mere 1% critical rate. Upon seeing this, he felt a deep sense of disappointment, and it even brought tears to his eyes. But suddenly it dawned upon him. He realized that he can now move, and his new form felt incredibly real, just like his physical body before his accident. This filled him with excitement, so he immediately tested his newfound mobility by running around with unrestrained joy. He even let out a howl like a real beast, a manifestation of his happiness. However, his celebration was short-lived, as his howl attracted the attention of other players. But to them, he was just an ugly beast, 
a stepping stone to level up. One player even remarked that it wasn't easy to deal critical damage to ugly creatures, which Lookin couldn't help but feel a pang of annoyance at such comments, but he also couldn't deny that their in-game gear looked impressive, even though they were rookies, which deepened his appreciation for the game. However, the approaching players had a different agenda, as they were only excited about the prospect of taking him down and looting his valuable weapon for profit. This revelation shocked him, he hadn't expected his weapon to be so expensive. The reason soon became clear, as he witnesses that he deals substantial damage to rookie players. Unfortunately, taking on five opponents at once was impossible for him at his current level. So, he desperately stalled for time, as he puts all his hopes in the chance that the other wild beast to automatically attack the players. And just as he expected, several creatures like him emerged from the bushes, and attack them at the same time, dealing a significant damage to them, smashing them in all directions, and while they're getting their ass handed to them, Lucian took this opportunity for a back shot, landing the final blow. This earned him 10, experience points and 1 point of monster reputation, which also unlocks the reputation store. This discovery filled him with joy, as he realized that defeating players could yield rewards, so he eagerly continued his onslaught, amassing a total of 30 experience points and 3 more monster reputation points. Additionally, he obtained 5 basic level recovery potions. This made him curious about whether this medicine came from a reputation store. So he opened the store window. To his surprise, it seemed his assumptions were wrong. The store didn't sell recovery medicine. It appeared that wild beasts like him couldn't purchase such items. However, on the brighter side, he noticed that he could level up his talent and quality in the store. With this, Lookin recalled reading on the official website that players didn't possess talents until they chose their careers. This seemed to be a significant advantage. So, he wondered if being a wild beast was a sort of cheat code, but that is only the case if he could also kill his own kind. If not, he will be stuck at level 1. So, without hesitation, he started his friendly fire. To his delight, he found that he could kill monsters without drawing the attention of other wolves as well. This realization filled him with joy, and he continued his onslaught with enthusiasm. A few moments later, he had killed a few of his own kind, and he even got lucky enough to obtain a quality upgrade point. This development thrilled him even more, so he continued his unprovoked menace behavior with increased energy. Fifteen minutes later, he noticed that he looked stronger than before. His prefix had finally improved, from weak to normal, and not only had his character changed, but his physical body had also become stronger. The negative stats he had initially were now gone. This realization filled him with excitement, he was happy to discover that being a wild beast wasn't a bad thing in this game, and the realism of it all made it feel like he himself was undergoing a transformation. However, his celebrations were short-lived as his attention was diverted by a scream for help, so he immediately turned around to investigate, filling his eyes with shock, as he couldn't believe that a few mother effing perverts are cornering a woman, since they had heard rumors that hitting players without any equipment with a mace would result in the cloth bursting effect. To his disbelief, it seemed to be true, as the pink-haired woman's armor is broken. But still, even faced with such circumstances, she was not willing to force shut down her game, because doing so would result in a three-hour downtime as punishment, and she had already signed a contract to be the ambassador of Empyrean and needed to promote the game soon, so, she would not quit now. However, her decision might change, as the pervert keeps on perverting, shamelessly looking at her body, and he heard that this game used the player's real body shape, making him even more brazen. Luckily, Lookin was not having any of this harassment, so, he bonked the offender hard on the head, and since he had leveled up, dispatching the others was easier, and having good recovery potions at his disposal really helped him quick in the process. However, it was a shame that only one potion would drop from each player, and that wasn't enough. Meanwhile, the girl assumed that the wolf had saved her, and she noticed he was eyeing the potions, so she thanked him by giving him all the potions she had. This surprised Liu Ken because he had initially planned to attack her as well. However, because of her kind gesture, he decided against it and simply took the potions before leaving the scene. With that settled, he noticed that there were people everywhere. It seemed like he wasn't far from the newbie village. 
If he stood out too much, he might become a target for elimination. So, he made the decision to stay away from other players as much as possible and focus on hunting other beasts. After a while, he determined that he had distanced himself far enough to be safe for now, and since he had become a wild beast as soon as he logged into the game, he had no idea what the other players were doing. So, he seized this opportunity to go to the forums, and watched the officially released promotion clip to get a better sense of what was happening in the game world. To his surprise, he spotted the girl he had met earlier in the promotion clip. This revelation astonished him because he had never imagined that she had such a background. However, what surprised him even more was the sheer number of players in the game. It appeared that there were more players than wild beasts, and they were fiercely competing for resources, making it challenging to level up. Yet he couldn't help but smile at his unique situation. As a wild beast, he had the advantage of being able to explore the deepest parts of the forest without worrying about monster attacks. This gave him access to a vast number of monsters to hunt and gain experience from. So, he continued his rampage with enthusiasm, and each kill rewarded him with 10 experience points, a single zero-star quality, and a single zero-star talent upgrade. After a few moments, he had acquired 10 zero-star talent upgrade. It seemed that he could finally upgrade his talents to a lowly werewolf bloodline, which increased his normal attack's critical chance from 1% to 6%. This delighted him, as it was a significant improvement. However, he couldn't help but wonder why the game consistently provided him with zero-star quality upgrades. To find answers, he examined the information about these upgrades. With this, he discovered that he could either sell 10 of them, to gain one, reputation point, or merge 10 of them to create a single one-star upgrade, and he needed 10 of these to rank up. This meant he had to defeat at least 100 opponents, but that would be time-consuming. So, it seems like he need to find higher level beasts to increase his chances of obtaining one-star upgrades. Thus, he wasted no time and began attacking ordinary rank werewolves, one after the other. This earned him 15 experience points with each kill, helping him reach level 2 faster. However, the drops remain the same, with no equipment nor one-star upgrades. With this, he realized that he needed to challenge stronger opponents. Luckily, he didn't have to search for long, as he spotted a formidable-looking beast, different from those he had previously encountered. Despite its strength, it was still at level 1, and now that he was level 2 with spare potions, he felt confident in his ability to win the fight. So without hesitation, he engaged the beast in combat, and despite the creature having higher damage due to the size difference of their rod, Lu Qian's agility stamina and performance proved to be an advantage. After a respectable 5 minutes of intense battle, he emerged victorious, and the battle had yielded him 20 experience points, both 1 star quality and talent upgrades, and even a dropped weapon. It was clear that spending 5 minutes fighting such monsters was definitely worth the effort, but the problem now is that he has 2 weapons in hand, and he doesn't plan on dual wielding them. Luckily, he remembered that he could sell one for 300 yuan. But before that, he needs to confirm the market price, so he decided to check the official website. After searching the market, he found that the weapon had only seen 100 transactions, suggesting that it was quite scarce. However, he decided to list it for 260 yuan, just to see if it would sell. After placing the item on the market, he closed the window and was about to continue his journey. To his surprise, a notification immediately popped up. Opening it, he discovered that the item had been instantly purchased by a player named For Cover, and the payment had already been transferred to his bank account. Seeing this news, he quickly connected his phone and opened the message to verify if it was real. To his delight, the transaction was indeed a success. This brought immense happiness to him, as he could now start earning money and not be a burden to his sister. It also meant that the company wasn't lying about the numerous business opportunities in Emporian. And with this special class and newfound confidence, he became even more excited to explore this virtual world further. So, he continued his killing spree. 20 minutes later, a system interface popped up, notifying him that he had reached level 3, resulting in significant increases in his attack, defense, and HP. 
However, he couldn't help but feel disappointed as he had defeated around 20 ordinary werewolves and a level 1 strong werewolf, yet nothing valuable had dropped. With this in mind he decided to challenge a level 2 special beast. In the area, there were a total of 5 special beasts, 2 at level 1, another 2 at level 2, and 1 at level 3. So he plans to kill these level 1 and 2 beasts, allowing him to repeatedly hunt all 4 beasts per respawn cycle. With this, he eagerly approached the first level 2 beast he encountered. To his surprise, his direct attack to the beast's head didn't kill it, instead, it counterattacked. However, the counterattack's damage was low, only slightly higher than the level 1 beasts, but it seems like it compensated for this with incredible attack speed, hence its name, the Nimble Werewolf. But although its speed was impressive, Lukin believed it didn't matter much at such low levels. With this, he felt confident that he could take down all four beasts before their respawn. And so, he strictly executed his plans as fast as he could. After a gruesome 40 minutes had passed, Lu Qin was having his main character moment, standing in the pile of dead werewolves he just mercilessly slaughtered. After that, he was curious about his progress, so he opened his stats window, only to be unable to help himself but grin as he noticed that upgrading his talent to 1 star had granted him a 10% critical hit rate. However, what excited him even more was the option to choose from 3 rewards every time his quality upgraded. This feature allowed him to upgrade his abilities up to 50% in each type of werewolf he wanted to become, which is very helpful, and you can never go wrong choosing to be strong, so he did just that. With this decision, he transformed into a special beast, significantly enhancing his abilities, and he now felt invincible. And after half an hour, Liu Ken had grown significantly stronger than before, as it seemed like he had chosen every available special talent for his current rank, resulting in a lengthy description that categorized him as a strong, nimble, hunky werewolf. He had also reached level 4. However, before continuing his hunt, he decided to sell the weapons he had obtained. Given their condition, he figured people would buy them even at a price of 300 yuan. So, he listed them all at that price. To his surprise, as soon as he closed the trade window, a message popped up notifying him that all his items had been sold immediately, which made his eyes lit up with excitement as he realized he had earned 1,700 yuan in just one afternoon. This meant he could buy his little sister, Louis, a new set of clothes. Meanwhile, the pink-haired girl from earlier was jumping with joy as she finally obtained the weapon. However, as she thought about it, she couldn't help but wonder how the seller had managed to acquire so many maces. It didn't make sense because there were numerous rookies fighting over a limited number of monsters, making it nearly impossible to gather so much equipment. This raised suspicions, leading her to consider whether the seller might be the highest level player in their region. To confirm her assumptions, she decided to check the leaderboard. To her surprise, there was no player with the name only on Wild, not even among the top 500 players in their area. With this, she concluded that the seller must be an illegal broker. However, before she could delve deeper into her investigation, her friend reminded her that it was time for her live stream. Reluctantly, she halted her investigation and started the live stream, warmly greeting everyone. Then she introduced herself as Feng Ling Ji and then proceeded to show the chaotic nature of the newbie grounds. There were already more than a hundred thousand players within the hunting ground, making it incredibly crowded. This overcrowding was making players unhappy, as it was making leveling up more difficult. They also had to contend with the cramped conditions in the newbie village. One player even joked that she might get pregnant due to the overcrowding. However, Feng Lingzi was there to brighten their mood as she began providing tips on how to level up faster, suggesting that they acquire a mace from the trading place. Even though it was only a level 1 weapon, having a mace would help them outclass hundreds of other players. Meanwhile, Liu Ken was also watching her stream, which helped him understand why his weapon had become so popular. He also got to observe what was happening in the newbie village, which made him realize how difficult it must be for players to progress there. In contrast, he felt fortunate to be a wild beast, even though there were only 30 beasts in his current area. However, he couldn't afford to idle around, as there were still four special beasts he needed to farm. So, he sprang into action, 
and for every special werewolf he killed, he gained 28 to 38 experience points, as well as both one-star talent and quality upgrades. With just a few moments passing, Lucian had successfully upgraded his talent and quality. He now felt so powerful that it wasn't even difficult for him to defeat beasts one level above him. As he dispatched a level 5 nimble werewolf with ease, earning 50 experience points, 1 star upgrades, and another tattered werewolf mace. This was particularly exciting for him as he was about to earn another 300 yuan from selling the mace. However, shock filled his eyes as he picked up the mace. To his amazement, it turned out to be an S-grade weapon, offering additional stats to the wearer, beyond the extra attack points. It also provided extra attributes like 2 points in power, which translated to 2 points in attack and 1 point in defense. Additionally, the 2 points in physical build meant an additional 40 health points and 40 energy points, this made it a godly item for a newbie. The only question on his mind now was how much he should sell it for. With this in mind, he decided to open up the forum, hoping to find someone who could provide him with reliable opinions. However, to his dismay, he was met with a bunch of trolls who didn't take his question seriously, so it seemed like he had no choice but to seek information in the trading place instead. Unfortunately, it appeared that no one had ever sold an S-grade mace before, so, he had to make a decision without much guidance, and considering that this weapon was only level 1, he realized that pricing it too high could be troublesome if no one bought it, as it was better to sell it quickly, and so he decided to auction it with a starting price of 1000 yuan, and just hoped that it would be sold within half an hour. If it indeed sold, he could earn 3000 yuan today, and if this trend continued for a month, he wouldn't have to worry about money anymore. Meanwhile, one of the players came across his auction and couldn't help but wonder why he was starting the bidding at 1000 yuan. It seemed like an absurdly high price for a level 1 mace. So, they assumed the seller might be looking for someone gullible enough to buy it. However, this didn't align with the prices he had set for previous weapons, which were quite reasonable. Therefore, it suggested that there was something special about this particular weapon. A few moments later, in a change of scenery, deep within the forest, looking continued his grind, and he acquired another weapon, which brought a smile to his face as he added another 300 yuan to his earnings. He had also reached level 5. However, the issue he faced was that he was only getting 1-star talent and evolution upgrades, so, it seemed like he needed to venture even deeper into the forest. And so, he did just that, pushing through the dense underbrush and towering trees. Luckily, his persistence paid off when he encountered a level 6 werewolf with exceptional agility, and looking at it up close, there was no doubt that this beast possessed a 2-star quality prefix. With this, excitement filled his eyes as he eagerly prepared to face it, and not even a moment passed, their attacks clashed, and their fight is so epic, that their every attack tore through the wind, but still, Lucian emerged victorious, earning 70 experience points along with 2-star evolution and talent shard, this confirmed his earlier assumptions, so he decided to focus solely on hunting monsters with exceptional in their names, a few moments later, after a whole day of grinding, he finally reached level 6. It had been tough, especially since the experience required had skyrocketed starting from level 5. But even so, he was happy because he had also leveled up his quality, so he was now considered a werewolf with exceptional strength and agility. Then, he checked his quality, it became evident that evolving to a 2-star quality directly doubled his attributes. However, he couldn't help but feel that these prefixes were becoming a problem. Because of this, he could be easily spotted even when trying to hide behind the trees. Still, he decided to deal with this issue another time, as he had been grinding for so long, and he was tired. So, it was time to log off for today. But before that, he needed to handle the equipment he had obtained. So, he opened up the trade window and put it all up for trade. As soon as he was done, his eyes lit up. He knew that he had just earned a significant amount of cash, with 9 regular maces and 2 small high quality ones. Despite their agility boost, which wasn't ideal for him, he could sell them for 700 to 800 each in the auction area. With this, he looked forward to reuniting with his sister, because at last, he was making money to support the family. 
just as he used to, not long after, he successfully logged off and took off his helmet. He then noticed a warm sensation in his hands. Witnessing the company's promises becoming reality, he assumed that this might also mean he could regain his sensations in the future. With this thought, his eyes lit up once more, and he was pleased that his second-hand gaming headset was a good purchase. However, his celebration was short-lived as he heard their front door creak. This could only mean that his sister was working overtime again and had come back very late, and looking at her closer, she seemed to be drunk, which made looking worried, and so he asked Lewis why she is in that state. However, she was too focused on sharing some good news with her brother, so she didn't answer his question, and instead, came closer to his brother, and told him the good news that she was going to make a large amount of money this time, since their company was moving to the Empyrean God Realm, and she was a core member of the team, since the head office had found great business opportunities in the Ninth Heaven domain, so they allocated 5 million for them to join the game, which was the reason. For their recent celebration, and the best part was that she was now the deputy team leader. Unexpectedly, she was so drunk and happy that she somehow ended up sitting on her stepbrother's lap, which made Lookin feel flustered. However, he wasn't as intoxicated as she was, so, he gently reminded her to be careful next time, considering that she was all grown up now, and their current position was quite awkward for step-siblings to be in. To his surprise, Louis' drunkenness seemed to unleash some Alabama spirit in her, as she didn't seem to mind being so close to her stepbrother. She even rationalized that they weren't real siblings after all. Therefore, she believes that she isn't doing anything wrong, and she had already decided that she wanted to be with him forever and take care of him for a lifetime. Lookin was taken aback by this revelation, and he couldn't even respond, since his face was already buried against her as she hugged him tightly, and in an oddly surreal turn of events, they somehow tumbled off his wheelchair, landing in an even more awkward position, and Lewis showed no sign of stopping, in fact, she pressed herself even closer to Lu Ken, and before he could utter a word, she gently touched his lips, silencing him, as she didn't want to hear him talk about not wanting to burden her, especially since the Empyrean God Realm had attracted hundreds of millions of players from around the world, including major companies, conglomerates, and even government officials. So, he can rest easy as she was presented with a massive opportunity, being paid while playing a game, and she was determined to take care of both of them. However, Lookin had some good news of his own to share as well, so he excitedly informed her that he was also making money in the Empyrean God Realm. Therefore, she doesn't need to work so hard to support him. Unfortunately, she didn't hear what he said, as she had already fallen asleep. Nevertheless, Lookin was overjoyed to see his stepsister smile again and since she was also playing the game. He decided to tell this at a later time, as he was confident that they had many opportunities to meet there. However, he couldn't help but ponder the fact that even national forces had entered the game. This led him to suspect that there might be hidden secrets within the game that they were yet to discover. He woke up the next day only to find out that his sister was already gone to work. Still, this made him smile as he realized that she had truly grown up. It also meant that he couldn't afford to idle around. So, he logged into Empyrean God Realm again, and as he looked at his character, he felt thankful that he was still a wild monster, and seeing in his balance, it seems like he had sold everything, since he got 3,915 yuan in his bank, but before he could start grinding again, he decided it would be best to check Feng Lingji's live stream to see what was happening on the human player side. Looking at her stream, she was complaining about how hard the game was, because she had played until 4am, but she's only at level 3, and she had heard that even the best players were just reaching level 5, and mostly they are from a big corporation. However, Fang Lingzi was thankful to a player named Wild because he had sold many maces, making it easier for her to farm. But her appreciation for Wild sparked jealousy among her viewers, so they started trash-talking Wild accusing him of cheating and wishing for him to get banned. Still, Feng Lingzi tried to defend Wild, asking her viewers to stop, and she had heard that Wild had played in the beta test, which might explain why he knew how to farm maces. And before things could escalate further, she said goodbye to her chat and continued her grind, as it wasn't easy to farm with thousands of players competing together. 
Meanwhile, Liu Ken was glad to see that not only was this girl beautiful, but she was also a nice person. So, before she ended her stream, he gave her a tip as thanks. In doing so, Feng Lingji was notified of his donation, which made her eyes filled with shock as she realized that Wilde had watched her stream. Now that was settled, Liu Ken began his grind, hunting level 6 exceptional beasts. And as usual, with every kill, he received 70 experience points, 2 star upgrades, and a weapon from time to time. Then, he continued this for 3 hours straight without taking a break. Thanks to his determination, he reached level 7, gaining an additional 740 HP. Furthermore, he upgraded his quality to a perfect 2 star beast, which made him very happy. However, the issue with his ever lengthening prefix persisted, but since he didn't have a clue about what to do with it, he decided to let it be for now and just move on to a higher level area. As he strolled through the woods, he couldn't help but wonder what his name would become after another quality upgrade. He even entertained the idea that it might be visible from 800 meters away. However, his train of thought was disrupted when he caught a glimpse of a cool-looking elite monster with a striking name. Not only that, but the beast also appeared to have 10 special monsters as its subordinates following it around. With this, Lucha knew he couldn't handle them alone. Still, he couldn't let this opportunity slip by, so he racked his brain for an idea on what to do. With this, he decided to open his inventory, only to find himself with only 4 healing potions, which was insufficient. Moreover, their cooldown times were a problem, as he was sure they wouldn't keep up with his need in battling the boss, and the 17 maces he had collected were also useless for this situation. Additionally, his upgrading materials weren't sufficient for another upgrade, so it seems like facing the boss wasn't a smart move in his current condition. However, before he could turn away, he was reminded of the reputation store, which he immediately opened, and to his surprise, the store was selling a unique item called the Legion Recruitment Order. Looking at its information, it seemed that he could recruit a creature using this item. After recruitment, the wild creature's level and talent rank wouldn't exceed that of the recruiter, and its quality must be lower than the recruiter's level. Additionally, the creature's original equipment would be cleared, and if the creature died, it would disappear without dropping experience, equipment, or items, but you would get back the Legion Recruitment Order. However, recruiting a beast isn't simple either, as the player needed to engage in a one-on-one -on -one duel with the target and is unable to use potions during the duel. Also, if the target is attacked by an outside party, the recruitment would automatically fail. But, the player didn't have to worry about unintentionally killing the target because after defeating it, they would be left with just 1 HP and be in a recruitable state. But still, recruitment had a certain chance to fail. If it did, the target would die without dropping anything, and only the Legion recruitment order would remain, returning to his inventory. However, if the recruitment was a success, the player could consume reputation, talent fragments, and quality potions to improve the attributes of the recruited entity. Now that he understood the potential of this unique item, Looking considered it to be useful for facing the boss in front of him. However, recruiting just one underling wouldn't be sufficient, so he wondered if the Legion recruitment order could be upgraded for multiple uses, but since it cost only 10 reputation points, he bought it to find out. To his surprise, he discovered that it could indeed be upgraded, but it required a whopping 500 reputation points, a massive jump from the 10 he initially spent, and although he found this cost to be massive, he knew that complaining wouldn't change anything, as he decided to sell all his available materials in the hopes of reaching level 3 for the item. Nevertheless, he couldn't help but feel a sense of loss as he watched his hard-earned 3-star materials transform into reputation points. A few moments later, he successfully upgraded his legion order to level 3, allowing him to recruit 3 underlings, which he immediately initiated the recruitment process by challenging 3 special beasts. After defeating each one of them, he recruited them without any issues, however, he still needed to upgrade their stats, causing him another tear to come out from his eyes as he used his remaining materials. Nevertheless, he now had strong subordinates in his side, which excited him, as he felt prepared to face the boss. And so without any hesitation, they charged as a team to attack. They first disposed of the weakest beasts, and after 10 minutes, only the boss remained. 
He then commanded Ertzi to charge first, but to his surprise, this mini-boss packed a punch, swiftly reducing Ertzi's health by more than half, while sustaining only minimal damage to itself. Showcasing its sturdiness, realizing the danger, Liu Ken ordered Ertzi to step back while he and the others took over, employing a cunning tactic of attacking and then retreating to recover. With this, it was only a matter of time before they defeated the wolf commander, Zakas. Rewarded Lukin with 360 experience, 3 star upgrades, a white level 5 leather shoulder, a grey level 1 tattered fur vest, and a green level 5 shattered stone mace. Lukin was particularly excited about the green quality gear because it had a high attack and additional attributes, providing an extra 6 in strength, 8 in agility, and 6 in stamina. It was a potent weapon on its own, and this made Lucian hesitant to sell it. And due to this, he came up with a clever plan. Instead of selling it, he decided to wait for Zakas to respawn and obtain another weapon from him. And while he waited, he commanded his subordinates to roam the area, targeting werewolves at levels 7 to 8. However, before they left, he reminded them not to wander too far, always pick up equipment, rest when their health dropped below 40%, and immediately notify him if Sokka's respawned. This effectively set up an auto-farming system, allowing him to take a break while monitoring his experience and loot increasing from a distance. To his surprise, it seems like his subordinates were more efficient than he was, which made him felt relieved, and now he didn't have to worry about them too much, so he took this opportunity to check the player situation in the live stream room, while hoping that no one had already caught up to him. As Liu Ken opened the live stream, he noticed that Feng Lingji was also dedicated to her daily grind, and it appeared that she was even more hardworking than him, as she is currently multitasking, interacting with her viewers as she grind, and she motivates them to strive for higher levels, as she emphasized the importance of reaching level 10 since it unlocked access to the main city in the Empyrean God Realm. At this stage, players could select from nine major professions, such as Poison Master, Spirit Tamer, Puppeteer, Archer, and more, promising a significantly more exciting gameplay experience. However, the other players she was with pointed out that the highest level player currently was still below level 5. They had also heard that it takes 10,000 experience points just to level up from 5 to 6, so what she was talking about seemed quite distant. Nonetheless, they were excited about the guild system, which should have been open for a while now so they suggested to Lingji that she should consider joining a guild, to which she responded that she didn't want to, because based on the current situation, being part of a guild would also mean competing for resources, and she preferred the flexibility of not being tied to one. Meanwhile, Lukin learned about the guild system and immediately opened the guild function. To his surprise, there were already numerous guilds to choose from, and many of them were famous groups. There was even a special forces division, which made him wonder if it was a real military unit, but seeing the multitude of guilds made him smile, realizing that this game was becoming more and more incredible by the day. Eight hours later, the game's realism was proven as Liu Ken had even slept peacefully in the game world, as he was awakened by a poke on the snout from one of his subordinates, and now that he's fully awake now, he was surprised to find that it was already seven in the morning. This also meant that Zakas respawned every eight hours, which was quite a long time even for Liu Ken. Nevertheless, he knew there was nothing he could do about it, so he decided to let it be. But before battling Zakas again, he planned to buy two equipment slots so that he could equip the shoulder pads and armor. After that, he opened his character panel to check his attributes, but as he examined his information closely, shock filled his face, as he couldn't believe that he had already reached level 8 and what was even more surprising was that he was almost level 9, this outcome brought a big smile to his face as he couldn't believe how effective his auto-hunting subordinates had been. And with three pieces of equipment on him, Zakas was no longer a threat. So, he went on to hunt Zakas, particularly aiming to obtain the stone mace again, all while wondering how much this green-grade equipment would sell for. A few moments later, he successfully killed Zakas once again, and to his delight, he obtained what he wanted, another green level 5 stone mace. As a bonus, a shoulder armor also dropped, and since his subordinates didn't have equipment yet, he planned to give these items to them. However, as soon as he opened his inventory, 
shock filled his face once more, as he couldn't believe that his subordinates had actually gathered 20 maces from farming. With this revelation, he realized that his earlier worries about spending reputation on recruits were foolish, as it had proven to him that it was indeed worth it. But as expected, the prices of maces had dropped, as they were now only selling for 280 yuan each. However, he could still sell a few of these low-quality ones for a bit more, and the white level 5 shoulder armor could be auctioned at a starting bid of 700 yuan, with a buyout price of 1,500 yuan. The only problem now was, that he didn't know how much the green mace was worth. This left him wondering, so he decided to go to the forum and ask for advice. But even before he could do that, several messages popped up, notifying him of the successful transactions of the maces. These constant notifications were distracting, so he disabled them for the time being. And now that he could focus, he noticed that his subordinates were just standing still, doing nothing, so he commanded them to continue grinding mobs while he went to the forums to gather more information. To his surprise, someone had already noticed the white quality shoulder pad he was selling, and it was causing quite a stir. This also drew attention to the 33 pieces of mace he was selling. With this, people were now curious about who this wild player was. However, this didn't surprise him, because even though monsters could avoid appearing on the gaming rankings, sellers couldn't hide their IDs when selling items, so getting noticed was just a matter of time. In fact, this only made him more confident that they would take his question more seriously now that they had noticed him, so he asked how much a green level 5 weapon was worth, and just like what he assumed, someone immediately answered, saying that it could be sold for 5,000 yuan, considering the shoulder armor was sold for 1,500. Still, the trolls persisted as they tried to confuse him, however, since the first reply seemed to have taken his question seriously, Lukin decided to follow that advice, setting the starting bid for the stone mace at 1,000 yuan, with a buyout price of 5,000 yuan, and even if it didn't sell immediately, he could try again in 8 hours. At the same time, one of Lingzi's friends was in shock to see the green quality mace, and even more surprising was that it came from a wild user again. This was impressive because he not only had a white quality item but also green ones. With this, the violet haired girl asked Lingzi if she was friends with this wild guy, to which she responded that she wasn't, but she had already come up with a plan to convince Wild to add her. To do that, Lingzi asked her friend to track Wild's ID, and as soon as he enters her live stream, she needed to inform her, which her friend understood. Meanwhile, Liu Ken had reached level 9. To his surprise, he realized that leveling up to 10 required 100,000 experience points, which seemed insane considering he had just farmed 50,000 experience points to reach level 9. However, when he looked at his stats, it seemed reasonable, as his attack was now over 60, and he had 1150 HP. However, his train of thought was disrupted as he noticed a bright light beside some corpses. Investigating it, he found 15 bottles of healing potions, which made him happy, and it was indeed surprising to find potions dropping in bundles. So he continued to investigate his surroundings and found a trail of potions lined up ahead. And even though it looks like a trap, his greed got the better of him, and so he followed the path, looting all the potions he came across, as he saw the opportunity for a big profit. And as expected, the trail led him to a group of players, and due to his current appearance and his long prefix, they assumed he was the boss known as Zakkas, and since they were particularly aiming to defeat Zakkas to gain money, just like only I'm Wild did, and secure a level 10 spot in the main city, they immediately went into formation and attacked him. However, Lucian didn't even flinch, as he expected this already, since his defense was already at 28, and his opponent was only at level 5, so their attack was only at 23 at best, and the one point of damage inflicted was just the game forcibly deducting 1 HP to show that it made contact. With this outcome, the player's morale dropped as they wondered about the kind of defense this beast had. Not only that, but it also had a massive amount of health. However, before their morale could plummet even further, Bairu reassured them, suggesting that the damage they saw might be the minimum damage dealt, and since they had plenty of potions, they could slowly wear the beast down. With these few words, and the belief that they were the strongest, they were easily convinced, and so they continued to attack the beast together. 
But Lu Chen, on the other hand, remains standing emotionless, unfazed by their attacks, allowing these delusional motherfuckers figure it out for themselves. However, even though a considerable amount of time had passed, it seems like they are still unwilling to admit that their attacks were only dealing one damage to him, which didn't make sense to Lu Chen, so he began to wonder if these players were simply stupid. Nonetheless, waiting for them to realize the truth would be a waste of time, and he couldn't keep targeting his own kind either, so a wicked grin appeared on his face as he realized he had to fulfill his role as a monster. Now that he had made up his mind, Luke Hen gave the closest player a piece of his mind, almost killing him, but he wasn't done yet, as Luke Hen decided to give him the other piece, however, before Luke Hen could deliver the final blow, the players began using their potions. Still, they soon realized that their potions weren't helping much, as it only restored 10 points per second, and each had a cooldown of 10 seconds, but they had come this far and were unwilling to retreat. So, they decided to be more careful with their positioning and take turns attacking the beast. To their surprise, as the boss moved, their attacks couldn't even land a hit. Instead, they were the ones receiving damage, creating a bursting effect with every strike they received. With this, they finally realized that winning wasn't possible from the start. So, they made the decision to run, but it was already too late, as Liu Ken had firmly resolved to eliminate them. And not even a moment had passed, Liu Ken had wiped out the group that was attacking him, and it appeared that he was now grinning with delight as he had acquired 27 bottles of potions from just one player. So, it seemed like he had just made a fortune once again, and from what he had gathered by observing them, these people must have noticed the declining price of regular maces. So, they decided to hunt for Zakus, but after the lesson he had just taught them, they probably wouldn't dare to try again for at least a few more days. This meant that he could continue grinding for a while and work his way up to level 10. Meanwhile, in the real world, inside the Jiangcheng Science and Technology Department, the group who failed to defeat Lu Chen, whom they had mistaken for Zakas, were conducting a meeting to discuss the recent events, and they seemed to have copium running through their veins, convincing each other that the outcome was fairly normal since the boss's level was three levels higher than theirs, so unless they leveled up and acquired stronger equipment, it would be wise to postpone attacking the boss, for now. They also recognized that the loss wasn't entirely in vain because they now knew the location of the boss. However, a nagging question lingered in their minds, wondering how did the user named Wild manage to do it, while they were beginning to realize that this Wild player was much stronger than they had initially assumed. Meanwhile, inside the game, Lookin was relieved to see that the emails had finally stopped pouring in. There were so many that he wasn't even sure if all the items he had put on the market had been sold, and with the commotion dying down, he easily organized his emails and was pleased to discover that everything had indeed been sold, leaving him with 25,221 yuan in his bank. However, he couldn't celebrate just yet because he still needed to reply to all the people who had messaged him. However, it would take him quite some time to individually respond to each message, so he decided to send a single group email to express his gratitude to everyone for their kind gestures. But he wouldn't be adding any in-game friends, and for those inquiring about equipment, he assured them that he would send an email before consigning equipment to ensure fair competition. With these matters settled, he closed his email tab and resumed his grinding. Eight hours later, excitement filled Lukin as he finally reached level 10. His continuous grinding had paid off, and he had also acquired 28 maces, one shoulder pad, one vest, and a handful of upgrade materials, and looking at his attributes, it became evident that the 100,000 experience points were worth it, as it resulted in a qualitative change in his abilities. But now that he had reached level 10, curiosity filled his mind, as he wondered if there were any new surprises awaiting him at the reputation store. So, without delay, he opened the store. To his surprise, he discovered three new options in the reputation store. Intrigued, he first explored the skin tab, and it turned out to be exactly as described. He could use 1000 points to change his appearance, which he considered this feature somewhat useless at first. So he moved on to the Bloodline tab, which instantly left him astonished. By choosing this enhancement, he could obtain the Bloodline of creatures from the same species after defeating a sufficient number of them. 
and bloodlines were a significant game changer, as they granted him access to unique talents inherent to his species, and its quality can be improved as well, just like what he did for his werewolf bloodline. But what was even more intriguing about this enhancement was it allows him to acquire the appearance and attack methods of other species, provided he obtained their skins. This excited him greatly, as it meant he could potentially transform into various wild monsters or even into a human being, which was a fantastic news. However, he couldn't make this decision just yet because he hadn't finished reading all the tab descriptions. So, he proceeded to the third tab called Mental Technique, where he can find enhancement that will grant the user the fourth attribute known as mana. This attribute would enable him to use magical attacks and defenses, and there were two options available. The first was the low-level monster meditation, which unlocked mana for 1000 points, and the other, also requiring 1000 points to unlock, the yellow-level spell induction, allowing the user to analyze yellow-level spells used by wild monsters after defeating them. Now that Liu Ken had read all of their descriptions, he hoped to obtain all of them since they all seemed great. However, due to limited resources, he had to choose wisely, so he decided to start with Monster Meditation, which allowed him to gain one mana point for every minute of meditation. With this decision made, he began his meditation. And there were three main ways to obtain mana in the game, through killing wild monsters, meditating online, and taking potions, while meditating and training, he couldn't perform any other operations, including transactions. This was a bit of a hassle for Liu Ken, so he decided to meditate for another time, and having spent a long time in the game already, he planned to log out, but before doing so, as he usually did, he decided to list all his loot for trade and auction. Afterward, he checked out the live stream to see what other players were up to. And since Lingji was specifically waiting for Liu Ken to join her stream, she made sure to track his anonymous ID from the previous stream. So the moment she saw his anonymous ID, she launched her scheme to add Liu Ken as a friend, starting a raffle, calling it a way to give back to her fans, in which she would choose a random audience member from her room and gift them a mace. To Liu Chen's surprise, she specifically gave this gift to him. This unexpected turn of events left Liu Ken amazed since he hadn't been in her live stream for long, yet he had already won something. And before he could take any action, Lingji contacted him immediately, requesting his account ID so she could add him as a friend and send him her prize. However, he refused and suggested she give it to someone else instead, but she proved to be persistent, as she isn't taking no for an answer. Three minutes later, they were still engaged in an argument, and Lingxi persisted and made another attempt to persuade Lu Qing to accept her gift, suggesting that he consider it a favor to her, and the only way he could convince her otherwise was to show her that he already had a mace with him. To prove it, she asked him to take a screenshot while holding it. However, Liu Ken understood that his current intimidating appearance, marked by a long prefix, wielding a werewolf mace, and accompanied by three idiots, might terrify others, so accepting Lingji's gift appeared to be the most sensible choice. Besides, Lingji had previously been quite supportive of him, especially when dealing with haters, so as a gesture of goodwill, he agreed to her proposal and accepted her friend request, thereby revealing his true in-game name to her, in which Lingji pretended to be surprised to conceal the fact that she had recognized him from the beginning. But since Liu Ken did her a favor, she took the opportunity to really express her gratitude, informing him about the poisonous fog forest that leads to the level 10 main city which had just opened up. With this, Liu Ken considered it impolite to delete someone as a friend, right after receiving a gift, so he decided to let it be, and just head to the poisonous forest, as Lingji had recommended.